Hello, my team's Alex here, back with, back with another DIY thing once again. And yes, I probably am beating a bit of a dead horse. Well, maybe not a dead horse, but I suppose I'm taking an old horse, because everyone knows about these things, and I am trying to find ways to make this thing better. I am not the only one to have done this, but, well, you could say I'm learning also about, well, in this case, simple circuitry on the fly as I build things. Anyway... Um, this is another Jewel Thief, let me just get that out of the way, but I've been trying to make these, uh, the whole Jewel Thief idea and also just ignore the uh, buck converter on the USB, that's just so I can show you it actually working, uh, and yes I haven't actually put its ultimate power source at least for this thing, which is in this case a uh, supercapacitor, which you've probably seen this cap, I've, I've had this thing in, uh, in shot of many DIY videos, more recently the solar related video, but uh, I've been trying to find a project which is going to make best use of this uh, particular cap, as this is actually a bit of an expensive one. Anyway, I've been trying to find ways to make the Jewel Thief at least just a bit better. Not oh, not just efficiency, but it's also its output and things like that. And also, people might be wondering, well, this is a Jewel Thief, but where the hell is the giant uh, toroidal transformer coil thing? It's on the underside, which is the big thing. That coil, actually, I've mentioned before is, I well, the coil that I've dubbed the Screamer coil as the the, the ultimate problem with with larger uh, toroidal cores uh, is the larger they are, generally, the slower they oscillate, which makes sense. Problem being is that coil actually oscillates in the human hearing range, and, well, you might be able to hear it once I turn the thing on, but it makes a bit of a screechy, horrible mess. Um, so there's that that I will be sort of dealing with. And also, I'll just say one thing I've been uh, considering, and it's more of an idea that I've just thought of, um, but to, because, like, with the bigger coil as well, it does give you more power to some degree, uh, as well, it makes sense. Like, the bigger the coil is, the bigger the magnetic field that it generates, so not only open circuit voltage, which this thing, this thing actually open circuit uh, generates over 110 volts on the output. And how do I know this? Um, since my multimeter, which is a bit of a cheap one, which you've probably seen before, uh, doesn't actually pick it up, I used a 3000 volt ceramic capacitor, like a 10 nanofarad one, something very, very small, right? So it's not quite open circuit, but it's it's a very small cap uh, that would essentially charge up very quickly and would obviously... Well, it'd just be easy to charge and therefore test, at least in this case, how much um, the, the voltage is going up to. So around 110 volts. Um, so there's that. Um, but the um, one thing I've been thinking of is, is getting, say, coils about this size, which this is about an inch across um, coils like so. And I'm actually thinking of trying to do a Jewel Thief, right, with essentially multiple medium-sized coils. So just the same wiring configuration, the same sort of size of coil, and I'll try and get them to be roughly about the same number of turns, you know, at least close enough. I'm kind of curious if I get a bunch of these and have these coils in parallel, In as far as logic is concerned and as far as I understand them, this should give me yet more power. In theory, anyway. Uh, although I'm kind of curious... Actually, I suppose, actually, yeah, multiple parallel coils. It might still have the same coil wine issue uh, that this one does. And also, let me put another disclaimer here. I This is actually the first time I've done any kind of... Um, Perf board, I think's the term. Uh, perforated board soldering, and I know it's it, like you've seen the underside already. It is absolutely shit. Believe me, I know it looks terrible, but it is functional, and that's all that really matters. Um, so there's there's that. And these LEDs, if anyone is wondering, these are not your standard 20 milliamp LEDs. These are actually higher power. Um, 50 milliamp LEDs and I've even put current limiting resistors as this coil actually kind of puts a bit too much voltage through the damn um LEDs anyway even though there's five of them which is another thing as well there's actually more there's more power available um and you can even see I've got a diode and capacitor there and that also increases the not only the, st the stability of the output, but it, it just makes the output well a lot smoother in general. That is actually a 6.3 volt, uh, was it 1500 microfarad capacitor? I don't, re I didn't really need a capacitor of such, um, of such capacity. If I just quickly uh, grab, let's sorry about this. Let me grab one of these. Um, I do have a bunch of these capacitors, which are 47. Uh, 
microfarad 63 volt capacitors, as you can see there. Apologies for the shaky hand, but this would have actually been enough. But I did have like quite a few of these caps just lying around these, those um, 6.3 volt caps I mentioned. I even had a couple uh, of these ones lying around, these really big ones. Well, really big in inverted commas, and if it wants to focus. Uh, which is the same voltage, but 3,300 microfarads, although at that point it's not it's not worth it at that point. Uh, not to mention you actually do spend at least about half a second charging up that big smoothing capacitor. Uh, the diode was actually there to actually make sure the capacitor actually even functions, in all honesty. It's on the, uh, the actual capacitor, the diode's on the negative side, in terms of positive and negative here. Uh, cap just sits there in between uh, the output, so where the LEDs are at. Um, the actual current limiting resistors are actually a little bit low in value uh, compared to what they should be, because um, these LEDs, like I said, they can handle, well, they're rated at 3.2 volts at 50 milliamps. Um, and I think for that, you needed about, I think if I remember correctly, you need about a 65, 66 ohm resistor. These, oh, those resistors there, which some people will probably have figured out already by the color codes, is uh, 56 ohms, which is a little bit low, which does mean that at um uh, well with the buck converter set to 2.7 volts which is the same as this cap uh the output voltage is actually 3.8 volts so once again it's a bit higher than it should be um so even with a modest load uh with five leds that because with five leds that should be in theory uh although considering the higher voltage and the lower resistance i got here you got about 300 milliamps on the output which that's not too bad when you think about it, uh, at least for a jewel thief. I mean, this could certainly get better as well. I'll get to the other. I'll get to the resist uh, the transistor in a second. Um, but it's actually got a decent, uh, decent output uh, and all that. Actually, we just get to the, the transistor now. It is a higher powered transistor. You cannot see it. It's a. Um, I think it's um, a, a TIP forty five C. I believe. Let me double check that for my own sanity's sake. Is it TIP forty five C? Yep, TIP forty five. Wait, forty one C. Yeah, tip 41C. Um, had, to, had to look at that twice to just confirm it. So, you know, it's a better transistor here uh, and all of that. Actually, one another thing I did notice is when I was playing with the open circuit stuff again, um, if I didn't have any load, I put one of the smaller caps in. Let's just say that circuit charged, it actually overcharged um, these that, that little capacitor there all the way up to about 72 volts. So, yeah, about... 10 volts over voltage, although the, the capacitor, I actually have quite a few of these, didn't exactly complain about that too much. Um, so it, there's that. And, and I mean, yeah, because people are probably thinking that, you know, 6.3 volts is actually a bit low for the um, output when you think about it, considering if this ever goes open circuit, you're going to have a really high voltage. Oh, speaking of which, uh, with one LED, um, just when I was testing, the capacitor, and this is when I was using the small ones, uh, was getting charged up to 8 volts, so the LED was getting subjected to 8 volts on the damn output, and well, for one thing, it was fucking bright, uh, as you would expect, being literally over-volted, over-volted, I suppose that is a term, uh, to hell and back, so yeah, with, with, I suppose, the bigger coil, it's got way more power available every time it oscillates, so if you're gonna make higher power Jewel thieves. At least this is in my experimentation. Uh, make sure your load is pr is you know adequate, because otherwise you're gonna have a like a really high over voltage. Uh, I suppose maybe you know some kind of. I suppose considering the amount of current this thing's outputting, a linear voltage regulator wouldn't be too terrible of an idea. Although I'd probably would wa I'd want something a bit more efficient. Uh, the diode is a shocky diode, if anyone's wondering, and it's way too big. I actually had to um. Uh, push out the uh, make the holes a little bit bigger for it. So, you know, it's way too fucking big of a diode uh, There's that and yes, I have these like terminal block style connectors because I what I would have soldered um, These these are actually these like wires here these exposed ones. They're actually paper clips oddly enough uh, I would have soldered them together, but um, the thing is with the soldering if I go to the underside well like I said, the LEDs there were the very first 
uh, things I was soldering, and I, I think the, my iron was set too high. It was actually burning the uh, PCB itself, so there's that. Um, and I wasn't trying to... I mean, the actual wires here, once again, they they're, they were either off-cuts of resistors of like the excess bit of wire, or they were paper clips. So I wasn't into solder bridging, but considering I'd burnt it already, although down at the very bottom left there, that's a solder bridge. That actually worked out okay. Um, but the rest of it is just essentially bits of wire. Uh, I used to sort of bridge the connections there. And like I said, I'm well aware it's ugly. I'm... Still a very much a noob at soldering. It works. It, it, it's nothing really to worry about there. Anyway, let me um, excuse while I put the phone down just for a moment and plug in the uh, uh, the circuit. You'll have to excuse the high pitch whining that you can probably hear. Um, but as as you can clearly tell, it is working. Um, if I had about 17 pairs of hands or a tripod would be uh, nice as well. I would have um, put the phone in the tripod and shown you the voltages. Just seriously, trust me, I set the buck converter to 2.67 volts, so super capacitor range. Um, the output I have measured on the capacitor with those LEDs uh, as they are. Uh, they, I think the cap, like I said, is about 3.84 volts at present, so not too bad. Um, and in, in my sort of experimentation slash uh, very bad testing, uh, although just before I say that, there's um, the resistor at the back. There's a one, uh, one kilo ohm resistor for, you know, just to set the oscillation. Is it to set the oscillation? I don't know. It's, it's the one kilo ohm resistor that everyone seems to use uh, in, the, in the Jewel Thief. And like I said, apologies for the whining, but I'll just be a moment. Um, but in my testing, as far as the uh, stability of the output, because, you know, that's some... Um, I mean, my phone's just going to adjust to it, but trust me, that is pretty bright, uh, and considering that it's actually bright sunshine outside, so it's actually a bright day, although there's not much sun in my room, so anyway. Um, but trying to get this thing to have a consistent light output is a little bit difficult, um, to be honest, um, but not impossible. Uh, from, what I've, uh, from what I've tested, the brightness remains within about... 10, well, 5 to 10% the same, down to 2 volts. So, you know, the 0 0.7 volts in terms of the upper range uh, of the cap there is fine. So the, volt, the actual brightness doesn't exactly drop too much. And um, down to when you start dropping down to one po uh, from between 2 to 1.5 volts, the, the brightness starts to dip down a bit more noticeably, but not too much. Not to mention the coil starts to increase in, in oscillation frequency. Um, and then below 1.5 volts, uh, the brightness is starting to dip very noticeably at that point. Probably it would have dropped by about 40%, 50% by now. Um, and the audible, and also the coil starts to screech uh, above human hearing range, so you actually don't hear it anymore. So let me just uh, turn that off because that is bright as all hell. Uh, not to mention, if I'm quick, you'll also see that there is a little bit of uh, shining lights. Uh, just because of the the actual output capacitor discharging, so the lights sort of fade on and off. Um, and that's, another, that's one other thing people might be wondering, is putting the amount of voltage uh, and current across those resistors going to... Because uh, those are only quarter-watt resistors. Now, according to various sites that I can, I've used to actually calculate how much... Uh, power is going through those resistors it's nearly the quarter watt rating although just by feeling the resistors they do not actually get all, all that hot so i think they're fine uh, in all honesty so that is pretty much all i'm going to say about the this particular jewel thief circuit at least my attempt to make a higher power one and i would say i'm relatively successful uh any if anyone's got any other sort of ideas for higher power dual thief modifications let me know but i am definitely going to see about getting some more torrid cores the, like the medium sized ones like this one because the big ones like that big coil there without the without even the copper wire with you know that big coil uh, torrid core was about 7 quid just for that uh, these ones these these coils shouldn't be too terribly expensive uh, but if i get a bunch of these cores and run them in parallel I'm kind of curious. That should be, that should do a very similar effect to a bigger core, um, while being in theory cheaper. But you know, I, assuming there's no other major limitations, you I could in theory just keep adding more and more in parallel. In theory, increasing the output by well, however many I decide to put in there. Although I would have to be careful about how much power I generate, because I don't know. I don't know if how eventually that resistor might blow up. Uh, if or a transistor, I guess it's not a resistor, it might blow up if I'm not careful. And I'd have to put an appropriate load on such a high-powered transistor. But at least I have tons and tons of copper wire. Uh, this um, eight um, eight 
uh, 0 0.8 millimeter thick uh, enamel copper wire. So it's about half a kilo of this stuff. So I, I have quite a lot of it lying around. So may as well make a few more coils and see what I can do. But anyway, yes, let me know what you think of this random thing down below in the comments. Uh, if you had any of those, any suggestions, like I just said, for p uh, potential upgrades uh, or any experimentations that you've done uh, with Jewel Thieves to make it a little bit more efficient. But, you know, I've got my version here. It seems to work fairly well. Um, and, uh, yeah, so if you had any ideas, just let me know in the comments. Link to my Discord is in the description, as always. And you know the draw by now. So, thank you for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video.